Hey guys, and welcome to Doing Things Dan's Way. So today, UPS dropped off a little upgrade for me. So on my uh, rendering station here, I have a 512 gig Evo 970 plus drive, uh, the 512 gig version. That drive is nearly full and I'm operating pretty much in rendering both the OS and all of my rendering and all of my media are on the same drive. So the thought was, hey, let's add a second drive of the same type that I can put into my machine. So what I got here is this guy. This is the Evo 970 Plus. This is the one terabyte version. The prices on these have not changed dramatically in the last, gosh, in the last almost year. Uh, this was in the $180 range. If you look here at the Amazon site where I picked this up, uh, my original version was right around $89, as I recall. And the new version here is in the for the one, one terabyte drive is 168. I believe it was about 199 about a year ago. So prices on these are holding fairly steady. This particular drive, uh, you know, it's great, but my motherboard only has one M.2 slot in it. And so because of that, I need to have some kind of adapter. So, uh, you know, again, Amazon, they have adapters for that sort of thing. So I came up with this guy. So this is a adapter that goes into your machine, obviously, and it is going to give you a spot for one more drive. So as an adapter, you know, it works great. It, it converts uh, some of the PCIe lanes that are on here and runs them over to the PCIe interface on the M.2 drive. Uh, this adapter, let's take a look inside here. So we get a little manual, SD card. Here's the adapter itself. So that looks exactly like the picture there. So we're going to screw that together and make it look like that. And then let's open up the M.2 drive here. So opening this up, it always astonishes me how ridiculously small these things actually are. And so this is just going to snap in. You can see the M key here and that key notches in and you basically hold this up at, a, at an angle slide it in and then you push it down and you're going to put a screw right there. Now one thing this kit offers is a heat sink. So there's a thermal pad here that you're going to put on the top of the drive and then here's the heat sink itself and that is going to be mounted right on top. A couple strips to take off. So go ahead and Install it here. Very simple. And then peel off this top layer. Okay, so we have ourselves a sandwich of heat sink and memories. Okay, that's already stuck on there good, but it gives us three rare bands to, uh, to use. So let's go ahead and utilize those. Wow, those are pretty strong. Okay, so now we have that stack up. I'm going to slide it in the notch. And the screw's already in there, so let's pull the screw out. Okay, that's pretty much all there is to that. Let's go ahead and throw on the riser. Okay, and there we have our assembly. So now let's uh, go ahead and tear apart our computer, which is always a little terrifying, and uh, let's get it installed. Okay, so looking in here, we have in the standard configuration, here's our graphics card. Graphics card is located in a PCI 3 slot to 16x slot. It's the fastest connection to the CPU there is. And over here is the M.2 drive that has four lanes of PCIe 3 going straight to the CPU. And this is how we get that 3,500 megabytes per second data rate that we see in the Crystal Benchmark. Now, uh, for this upgrade, I'm gonna take and leave the graphics card where it is and install our M.2 uh, adapter here, which only uses a few of the lanes that are in this connector. So if I install this here, this would be the normal configuration uh, for this card. 
Now there's a strong possibility if I take the solid state drive connection and put it over in the graphics slot, the graphics slot, uh, I would get better performance. Uh, and if you want to see how that works and how that's actually a fantastic idea, go ahead and click up here uh, for a video that uh, discusses that. For now, we're going to just install the solid state drive in the PCI2 slot and see what kind of data rates we get out of this uh, configuration. So now all we need to do is uh, put a couple screws back in the box, close it up, and then let's run some uh, benchmarks. Okay, now that we have the solid state drive mounted on the adapter and installed in our computer, let's boot up Windows 10 and let's get that hard drive mounted to the file system and formatted so we can use it. So once we're up in Windows, we're gonna hit the question mark and type drive manager. And right away, this is gonna pop up and unfortunately, I've already done this step, so I'm, you don't get to see it here, but it'll pop up and say that it found a drive that was unutilized and asks if you want to go ahead and utilize the drive. You just say yes to that. You'll see a drive number associated with it as well. So now we go to our list of drives here. We can scroll down to that drive number. In my case, it came up as disk number three. And here, uh, it will basically say that this is an unformatted partition. All you're going to do is right-click on this and say Format Drive. And from there, you'll be able to all allocate the drive to 100% usage. You get to pick a uh, system volume, in which in this case, I called it a one terabyte SSD as my name because that felt very descriptive to me. I gave it the drive letter M because that this is my media drive. So for me, again, that just connected with the way I want to use the drive. Uh, and then click format and the drive is there. It's really, really simple. You'll, you'll understand it as soon as you hop into it. Let's run Crystal Benchmark on both the C drive, which has the standard full speed PCIe 3 lanes uh, to talk to the, the CPU with. And let's take a look at the drive we just installed in the PCIe 2 slot. So as we can see here, our master drive, our C drive, is right around 35 to 3600 megabytes per second. But our added drive, which has the same capabilities, is only running at about 1600 megabytes per second. And that's a limitation of the PCIe 2 slot that we put the card into. So that is going to be the practical reality. Unless your motherboard has multiple PCIe 3 slots available, uh, you're only going to get about half the data rate possible out of this new drive. So while it feels like a bummer, uh, realize it's still 1600 megabytes per second. So this is already a pretty huge score considering our internal solid state drive is running at about 500 to 600 megabytes per second. So we're at two to three times the speed of a internal solid state drive and a mechanical hard drive is gonna be even slower than that. So this is still a totally worthwhile upgrade. So that's about it for this. I hope this was helpful. Uh, there are links down below for both the solid state drive and the adapter that I used uh, in, this, in this video. And those are affiliate links. So I appreciate a couple percent when you buy those. So click up here if you want to see a video on how I swapped the graphics card and the solid state drive, the same one, and got substantially better data out of the hard drive and how the graphics performance uh, was basically the same. And I was, you know, smack on my head right here to uh, subscribe as well to get the videos next time they come out. So until next time, guys, be blessed.